this is this is this is Well, dude, thank you guys. How was yoga, by the way? <laughs> yoga was killer. Good, are good. You, are, are you good here? Yeah, now let's look at us. All right, no, yoga was great. Yeah. Um, it's kind of my new thing. I'm doing it. Um, well, I was doing it three times a week. And now I'm about to do it five, like every day until I go on tour. You get obsessive about things, don't you? Yeah, I do. I, crazy. I get, check this out, though. So I wanted Miles to come over because I want to talk about. Uh, so we did this fun seven inch. Mm -hmm. I heard about it. Let's talk all about it. Sold out. Sold out already. <laughs> Sold out. Yeah, in one hour. Amazing! Okay. Congratulations. So here's the thing, though, because this is actually important too. So anyone who wants it, they actually made a couple extra for me, and I'll talk to you about this later because I want to give you some more too. Okay. But uh, I think I'll have like five for like every show that I, like I'm. I have 15 shows, so I think I'm going to – it's three to five. I haven't really figured out how many I'm getting yet because, you know, there's like an overrun, sure. you know, sometimes. And then, I don't know. But uh, so, yeah, that's the way I'm going to try to get people to come to the shows early. Yeah, and that's and called – just, just for, for people <laughs> that are wondering, it's called John Snodgrass and his buddies. Yes. Seven inch – is it two seven inches or two, Gosh, two – just one seven inch? But it came with baseball cards. Oh, Cool. Yeah. I love I that to, idea. Here, talk to Miles for a second. I'll be right back. So, yeah, Miles, yeah. welcome, by the way, Miles Stevenson. It's nice to officially meet you. Nice to meet you as well. It's been a long time. How are, how old are you now? I'm 20. 20. Oh, my God. <laughs> awesome. How, how does that feel? Uh, it feels like I'm just too short of being able to buy some pretty cool stuff from the stores. Oh, yeah. You're almost there still getting old it feels like i remember before i was 21 it was like it took forever that's that's the feeling you're having right now longest year yeah the longest year for yeah, sure i still have five more until i'm able to rent a car that's right it, 25 to rent a car or something that's why we brought our first roadie on tour with us he was old he was like way older than us rob so he Cars. He could rent the cars. He could rent the hotel rooms if we got a hotel now and again or a motel, um, things like that. Just like, oh, yeah, we're covered just in case. Yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. little kids at the time. We were like 18. Yeah, 18. So, uh, yeah, it's frustrating trying to like go meet my dad for all of his shows around around all the states and then not being able to rent a car. So I have to Uber like two hours to meet him every time. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Or hop on those like a little electric scooters. At least you have Uber. We didn't have Uber back in those days, back in our yeah, days. Exactly. <laughs> the, the option is there, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, we're just talking about how Miles is 20 and it's the longest year of your life because you're just waiting yeah. to become 21. To All do right. something, I don't know what, you know, do something. Go, go into places that serve adult beverages. Yeah. Miles, you don't know, drinking, not really a big deal. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I remember <laughs> the days like before I did it, and I loved it. It was so much fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. Whatever. I mean, it's fun to have like a drink sometimes, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of overrated. <laughs> I kind of don't do it anymore. Um, uh, Which is a big thing, but we don't need to talk about that. I, I want to finish up about you know your seven inch because well, look. Who, so okay. so what's the situation like how many songs okay boo boo Here's man i have yeah what is boo boo man w woof's man woof's man sorry i probably said that wrong boo boo man is 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 bill and miles thing boo boo man's my nickname when i was younger my dad called me boo boo man so we had to pick a baseball team so it's boo boo men okay can can you tell the story of how you got that nickname i have not a clue you probably got <laughs> hurt a lot as a kid <laughs> I that's what you would think, right? Yeah. And then it's a weird thing because it became my password for most things. Some sort of variation of that became my password. Uh huh. And, uh huh. In uh, Boo Boo Man Twenty One Twelve. Ah. You better start changing school, those passwords. In school, if I had to tell them my password because I got locked out of something, they always gave me a weird eye because they thought it was some sort of like weird teenage boy thing for boobs mm -hmm. and i was like no it's just my childhood nickname <laughs> boo boo man <laughs> i'm a boo boo man <laughs> yeah yeah john can you get can you get a little bit more in the camera just yeah, slightly you're just like 
yeah. it's gonna annoy a lot of people if you're like kind of just like half of you is off camera. That's cool. For those OCD but, people watching right now. Um, but I'll tell you about that seven inch though. Well, and then the I'll tell you about the Wolfsman thing in a second. Uh, but you did playing cards. You did baseball cards, yeah, right? We did these. Can you? Yeah, show? and it has like, it has. Can you see that? It's got all the stats on the back, which I think. I wish we could have waited a little bit. I think we're going to get to add uh, more stats. Uh, what are the stats yeah. on the back? Sure, can Miles, you, can you got, read? Miles is getting a, a, a Bill the Welder stat. I think he, him and his dad are going to play with Bug. Bug's putting out a record. Another <laughs> record. So what are the stats you have on there? Oh, well, Miles, here, read more stats, buddy. Man. Pretty sure I've got, <laughs> yeah, uh, my, like, make-believe bands in 2012 when I was, like, 11 years old yeah and uh skateboarding the years that i skateboarded <laughs> you don't skate anymore no, no more skateboarding not as consistently as i did in my earlier years they start earlier but, and earlier and they burn out earlier and earlier <laughs> i used to skate too <laughs> i tried it the other I day still skate. i still skate but uh i wouldn't call myself a skater what else you got on there that's and then I was asked for, like, uh, statistics on, like, my high school GPA and stuff, but I was figuring we could leave that out of we, there. We can leave that out. That's this a, is my new O deck. That's you know a beautiful. O people love, right? Oh, yeah, I know O, yeah. Ah, that's awesome. That. Yeah. Man, that re I mean, skateboarding was so much fun. I, I got to get be good friends with Steve Caballero, and uh, he gave me one of his boards, like, a full deck, and it was, like, Pal Peralta. Uh, back when he rode for them. I don't know if he still does. Maybe he still does. But uh, indie trucks, Spitfire wheels. I was into it. I was really like, I was, you know, from, from a little kid, sidewalk surfing, as we call it. And then um, from there, I just went to parks and, and a lot of street skating growing up. But I bet you're a killer. You seem like an athletic type. <laughs> yeah never 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 like uh the best but but i'm trying to get up there you know like third or fourth place or something that's why i like baseball i get the thing <laughs> i was talking about uh actually if you wouldn't mind i'm gonna read this thing real quick but if you're batting 300 you're you're doing well and that's like what 30 percent. so yeah that's my thing they asked me to write something about the seven inch and uh and i did and um where did I put it? I just had it. Here we go. I think it's pretty good. Oh boy. So we'll definitely uh, get get to uh, how people can order it and everything. But I'll put all that stuff in the notes. They can't order it. So it's sold out. That's right. They can come to your shows that you have yeah. coming up. I'll have at least three or five. Depends when you, on how many miles when, twist my arm to take from. <laughs> when are you playing? In September. Okay. I play California in September. And then I'm going to play a, sh a couple shows in uh, Minneapolis and Mankato. Um, and then we're going to fly down to Atlanta, South Carolina, and then we're going to do the fest in Tampa before the fest. And but, who and you, is is it the same band? Are you playing Miles? Are you going on the tour or no? I'm not as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> on tour. You can go next time. Uh, you want to go? Sometime? Once you're 21, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. So, so let's look. Let, can you talk about like playing on the on the the songs? Like, what did you do? You playing bass? No, I need it. So here's the thing. It's kind of funny. So these songs, they're like, uh, I wrote a bunch of jingles, as you knew, like last year. You always and do. Two, yeah, and two <laughs> of them were for. Uh, uh, I wrote one for Vannon. Uh, okay. Watch company. Yeah. And uh, and then for Destroyers of Sleep, who's my friend uh, Corey who they have this thing where they're teaching kids how to draw. Like, remember those old commercials? And they have like a pirate, and then there was like a bird. During the Saturday morning cartoons, and they would have these commercials like, learn to draw a pirate. Okay, maybe. I don't think they ever said that, but it's, it's not ringing a bell, pirate. but yeah. And um, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write jingles for you guys. That's cool. And then I'm like, duh, <laughs> Bill knows these guys, you know? And like any excuse to get to play with him, I'm like, cool, you know? So. Yeah. You know, he wasn't doing shit, you know, like, so he's, I mean, he was busy working on the other stuff, but I mean, we we're all just sitting at home last year. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's like, yeah, I'll do that. And, uh, then I wanted like a younger voice. This is what's funny. 
to me because I always think of Miles as really young, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but Bill's okay. like, he's like, you do know that Miles is now a 20 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do know that. Yeah, uh, but I wanted this because it's this like uh, I needed him. I wanted someone else's voice because not only that. I had this little bit of like a almost had like a Peter Brady thing to it where I wasn't like singing the best. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. I thought that was great. But then after we mastered it and made it big, then my vo- I don't know, I kind of blew it. In one part. I should have had you sing more. That's what I'm getting to. But uh, I wanted like a younger sounding voice. OK. You know? Where can, can we hear the, the tracks are on Bandcamp or what? What are they? Are they? Nope. It's no. that's why they sold out because they're just yeah, so exclusive. I think he was trying to sell them through a Bandcamp thing. Maybe you can listen to the music on there, but uh, eventually you can buy it though. Maybe you can't buy a download yet on a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you can't buy a download right now. Like so, re- so. literally, there's no reason for people to go look for this thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> I actually went out of my way to try and find it before we showed up here, just because like it was such a. It was such a brief thing that he had me do, and I was like super stoked on the idea of it. Yeah. But I didn't know much about the actual songs, and I went to try and find it. You can get a little snippet of it on his Instagram. Okay. Playing. It's a snippet. But uh, bastard. Yeah, but there is a thing though. Speaking of doing live shows, um, and you should listen to it too if you ever want to end up being in the band. Uh, I'm putting out a live. We mixed the live thing that I did. Like I did uh, when the Taste record came out. Okay. Last year. Yeah, Taste. Uh, we did a live show and we recorded it. So Neil Hennessy from Lawrence Arms and then Sam Bole, bass player, Dick Dale, Agent Orange. Uh, we played and I just melted that thing down. It's going to come out the 27th. So that'll just stream in, in all of the places. But I want people to know that we're going to play some rock and roll. August. You know? August 27th? August 27th, Friday. Taste live. Like the album live? Yeah. That's dope. Do it live. There's one song I didn't do. Uh, I played for an hour. We played for an hour. And I took out most of the songs that were shitty that I wasn't very good at. <laughs> I got you. I know what you mean. But, you yeah, know, you got to pick your strongest stuff and put your, your best leg forward. Yeah. But before I forget, yeah. you know, for me? I remembered something. That we were working on. Oh, yes. Uh, I think maybe I'll send you a version of it and we should do like a rock version. Maybe Miles will help us with it too, <laughs> right? But do you remember this? Weren't you talking about slugs or something? And I yes. promised that we finished the song. So how about some people eat slugs? It's not a problem. Some people eat rugs. And I support them. And then some people say things they might they make you feel like you're not okay. Yes, I'm aware of them. See what I did there? Yeah. I said some people need hugs. And I support them. And some other people need drugs. It's not a problem. And then some some strange, uh, some strangers are brave. They try to tell you how you should behave. Nice one. It's a shame. I like that change. Yeah. Cause we're okay. How's that? I love it. You like slugs? Slugs. Did you hear- should I send it to you? If I send it to you, like seriously, would you help me finish it? Yes, absolutely. That's just a little bit. Yeah. It's like a minute. Who's going to play drums? Stefan. <laughs> He's busy now, but. <laughs> I ask Stefan to do it. Ste- Stefan's always on drums, and he's not the drummer. <laughs> Stefan? Yeah. He's a fantastic drummer, though. My dad can't so, stop talking about it. He's so killer. He talks about how great of a drummer they, he is. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know that story. Like, whenever he was joining the band, yeah, I mean, you know the story, uh, but I'll tell you because you might not. And I think it's amazing. So Carl was telling Bill, he was like, "No, like the Stefan from my from my band, you know, like." And he's like, and Bill was like, he's like, wasn't even thinking about who the guitar player was, who was probably fine. But he's like, "Yeah, but what about that guy that was walking on the drums?" 
And he's like, that's Stephen. <laughs> he plays the guitar as good as he plays the drums. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, right? Do you know that story? Yes. That's, oh, yeah, that's the way it is. It's that's a good great. story. And that's yeah. the way it is with Bill, too. Bill's, you know, as good at guitar as he is at drums. And Dude, Stephen plays, always told me that. Yeah, he plays bass on this thing. And uh, oh, I, I yeah, I, are you going to punk rock bowling? Yeah. Okay, so they, like, totally blew it, in my opinion. But whatever. <laughs> Because the the Senates are playing, Frank Turner's playing, right next yeah. to each other. I'm like, I mean, buddies. At what point did you not realize that me and Frank made this record? Buddy that said, has Stephen playing the drums. That means you need to get in on that. To play bass, and it was just going to be a sweet surprise, and no one called me to come. That would have been sweet, though. It's it could, okay. It could still Another, happen. I think we might do it on the flogging Molly boat. That'd be amazing. Yeah. So have you, have you never done any of those? Will you be 21 then? I don't know. I don't oh, know. you're going to die on the boat. <laughs> Please don't die. I'm sorry. No, keep going. Uh, <laughs> I, don't really, I was going to say, have you played those songs live, the buddy songs ever with Frank? Or is it just like a strict sort of no. record that you kind of no. get to No, we, we talked. I mean, I was like, I was kind of a pest. I mean, just to him, you know, I didn't really want to make a big deal out of it. Uh, but I was like, you know, that would be cool. And he's just like if I can make it into the country. I mean, like, yeah. there was, like, I don't want it to sound like I'm, like, being sour grapes about it, because I'm not. But, like, there was a lot going on, like, if it was even going to happen. Yeah, you know of course. I mean? But, yeah, it's probably too late, but whenever someone hears this, they're going to be like, fuck, get John on the plane. Get him down there. <laughs> yeah, Buddies 2, man. It's it's fun. Buddies 2 is the best record called Buddies 2 I ever made. I love it. Yeah. So, Pretty, it's too? pretty great at times. Stephen plays the drums? Uh-uh. You know my song called Stephen Plays the Drums? No. He goes. I don't, I don't remember how it goes. He goes, Stephen plays the drums, but he's not even the drummer in the band. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, is it, a, is it meant to be a comedy record, or is it just how, how it comes out? <laughs> it's just it's fun. We funny. Try to have, and that's the whole thing, you know? But you can right? literally almost categorize it as rock record but also well rock and blues you know blues and blues and country too but blues. almost like there's some blue there's no blues i mean the oh, country no. stuff maybe you know like r&b <laughs> rhythm and blues is what i mean the kind of oh, i don't i don't mean like you sound like stevie ray vaughn i mean like your chain the changes the guitar playing you know oh yeah it's my songwritery maybe Fucking perspective but right what's that blue. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's even some twinges of like, you know, yeah, like the drag the river style that you write, you know, in, in, oh, in some of the stuff, even though you're not like packing on all the instruments necessarily, but it, you, you could hear it, it could be there. Right. But well, I mean, uh, that's just, that's just how, and you know, Frank too. I mean, that's just how we make music. I mean, yeah. we just, um, yeah, you didn't know about that? Buddies what too. What I know you the best for is not fine and Jessica Suicide. Oh, okay. so yeah. those are absolutely like what I think of when I hear your name because mm. those are my favorites all time. I made those back when you were a baby. I know. Yeah, I've been listening to them my whole life. <laughs> Sweet. Those are good. I was gonna yeah, say. I was gonna say like oh. the banter between you guys is hilarious uh, on Buddies Frank? too. You and Frank. Yeah. Um, you, Miles, you need to do a, at least a, a, a gloss over of the record because it is fun. It's great. It's got it's got moments. Yeah, buddies too. Buddies too. Okay. Uh, it's got some moments where and this have, podcast will make a yeah. lot more sense actually after <laughs> you'll be like, now I know what you guys are talking about sometimes. But uh, I'm gonna return this to you. No, you can have it. Can you hold up the cover? Can you hold up the cover yeah. in the camera? Yeah, that's buddies too. So the first. Buddies one was you got the dogs together, but now yeah. Buddies two was all like a like yeah, a, a Skype call or something like that. <laughs> we're actually in my office. FaceTime. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Look, these are right here. Uh, so oh. bad so, times, yeah. good vibes. Yeah, this, bad times, good vibes is a great a great song on there. This was Buddies, and the, we recorded this in this garage. And this Buddies two. This one is still around. And then that's Frank's cat um, named, um, oh, it's so great, Buddha Cat. You know okay. who Buddha Cat is? Buddha Cat. Buddha Cat. You know who Buddha Cat is, though? Uh, no. I don't either, but it's somebody. <laughs> and it's a funny pun. Buddha no, Buddha Cat, I think, is like a, 
Booty call. I thought it was a pun for no, booty call. No, it's like a strong <laughs> female African uh, goddess. Budi- like Budokan? Like live at Budokan? Yeah, it's live at the Budokan. It's, the cat's also named Cheap Trick. There you go. Yeah. I like it. Fun, fun, fun. What's your obsession with Frank? <laughs> what? Is there an obsession? You're like, what? I don't know. I don't recognize that. Your What's obsession that? with Frank. Your obsession. My what? It, obsession? What? It, yeah. Do you have one? No. <laughs> Maybe it's both of you obsessing on each other. But like to make okay, two sometimes. albums about being buddies. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there was nothing. We weren't doing anything last year. You know. Again, and Frank is really good with uh, dates and facts. You know, and he realized that it was the tenth anniversary. So we're like, oh, that's something that we can do. But then during the record, I'm like, we'll do one in, tw- in 2030 called <laughs> Buddies at Sea. Buddies, yes, Buddies so at Sea. I love it. Ride. You can come. You'll be able to go. Yeah, it'll be fun. What's the uh, the cruise that you're talking about? The boat Blogging Molly cruise. Yeah. So Are you going to that? Is will that you be still that? happening? Uh, we'll see. Does that happen in this year? I heard about it and I was stoked, but I wasn't sure if it was going to go down. We'll see. I mean, how do you feel about stuff? Do you think even shows, like these shows in September, like I don't think we need to pedal back, right? But we're going to have to really fucking mask up, and right? I mean. Yeah, the problem the problem we're having se- seems to be what the, the vaccines for a certain kind of COVID and then now we have a new kind of COVID, you know, the variants. And yeah. so it's like, as shitty as that is, it's probably reality you know so that means i don't think we should go backwards like i really hope we don't have to go backwards and like lock down like australia constantly locks down and and that must be really hard for people i'd love to know i'd love to know what what it's like out there but um we ain't gonna be out there anytime soon because you can't get in the country not at least probably for a couple years i think so back to your original question i mean i I don't know anything but i don't want to go backwards so i think that we need to be responsible and just do the right thing right yeah and that's going to be different for other everybody which is right rough too you know um is the right thing to do sure right yeah that's gonna be weird because it changes too because what you think is right right now could be wrong in six months exactly yeah i don't know i'm just trying to roll over and let it happen like whatever <laughs> anybody wants me to do to like not have this huge political argument about it like it's like do you want me to wear a mask or do you want me to blow on your face yeah. it's i don't know what they want from me so i'll just kind of do whatever at this point yeah i can't <laughs> wait to get back to face blow <laughs> <sighs> yeah and I, my my knack my natural sort of uh, resting bitch face, if if that makes any sense, my natural like go to is to reject authority and reject oh. what p- most people want me to do. So it's very strange to see, <laughs> you know, what's going on these days. I and know. Being like, but but, but I, I'm a responsible adult as well. So yeah, I'll, if I got to wear a mask to go into Lowe's or to go to the grocery store, I'm gonna put the mask yeah. on if I have to. Because we're dads. Yeah. You just think we, about things. We are dads, aren't we? You know? Yeah, I mean, you got to like... I, I try not to think of life in that way only because, you know, not everybody's a dad. But, um, but, but yeah, it's but true. A lot of people have dads and they understand. I don't think it's the same thing at all because I had a dad my whole life until I, I was dad, a dad. Dads it's, are a big thing in the world. It's a big thing, yeah. but it's different. It's different. Dads are popular, man. Dads are a thing. <laughs> dads are rad, for sure. That's in right now. Some are. I mean, uh, I'm totally blowing it on a lot of things. Uh, God, where is this fucking dad thing? Dad bods, dad jokes, dad podcasts. I mean, it's it's a rage for sure. It's is like almost. There's a lot of dad. Po- there's a million dad podcasts, dad rock podcasts. Like, yeah, there's a lot, and almost as many as there are murder podcasts. That's Isn't it weird? Obsessive, obsessive that as well. Want to talk about murder all the time? I, it's 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 not weird but it's it it's probably not great for you for for the psyche um eric yeah i can't handle too much of it i can handle a little bit but i go through like anything in life 
times where I feel fine watching a horror movie or seeing uh, really gnarly things. And then other times I'm like, ah, I want to stay away from that. I like the p- phase in your life where you really want to talk about murder. And yeah, then yeah. <laughs> phase. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because my wife's been in that phase for a long time now. I mean, she's not in it right now, but for a long time she was definitely – listening to a lot of those murder podcasts and and I think the world's gotten so heavy that that isn't isn't as popular these days I think and but there's still tragedy that happens all the time um that uh people want to know about so free Britney you know about free Britney who's that Britney Spears oh yeah she's uh she's under a conservative ship her parents her yeah I know know. Jamie Spears yeah she, yeah. but the headlines are constantly like, she's free. Jamie Spears is stepping down. And it's like, nope, not actually true. <laughs> What's the, uh, is Jamie Spears her dad? Yeah, that's her dad. Yeah. Jamie. It's, it's the Coogan a- account that was, right? What's huh? that? Coogan account, the bank account, so that a kid that's earning money underage, the parents can't steal the money from them. So, oh, whatever that bank account is called, was right. set up to avoid that, wasn't it? Uh, conservatorship is is a different thing. It's actually like for adults, adult, okay. adults that go crazy or can't can't be you know can't basically like handle themselves. But oh. I mean, Britney Spears is she's probably crazy. Like, well, <laughs> kind of like John Snodgrass is a little crazy. Like we're all a little crazy, right? But we trust him to take care of his kids and do do normal everyday things. And I think that's the difference. Is a lot of women uh, get get thrown into that it's a very sexist thing because you don't see a lot of men under conservatorship i don't i haven't anyway so huh it's pretty I think i'd like to be on a under a conservatorship so you can't drive a car or like it depends on what your conservative Sounds thinks good. it'd be like oh, you'd I have to drive. you'd have to stay at home all the time i like staying home i get to leave sometimes right i mean Absolutely. if you have yeah <laughs> right you want more conservative conservatorship where like I get to leave sometimes. <laughs> of course, you want freedom. That's that's the thing. It's like you don't have freedom under a conservatorship, or at least under Britney's. So, yeah. Miles, hey, I'm, you want to come in and talk to these guys on a podcast? Who is it? My daughter Tanner. She doesn't do that anymore. She used to like doing those things. Mm-hmm. Now they're not into it. They go through phases. My they kids. Through, do your kids do, do that? They no. They're like. My 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 son, he's five. He's like, uh, my friend's story showed me a a bad word with your hand, and I was like, what is it? And it was you know the middle finger. I was like, what is that? And he's like, I think it means like, shut up or something. <laughs> okay, I can get Hopper to come in here, and he's he's way out there, unprovoked. He's just gonna do that, oh. <laughs> like like yeah. Um, so yeah, Tanner, mine are pretty clean. Pretty Tanner, I, I named after Tanner Boyle from the Bad News Bears, who's the sexist, racist, homophobic, you know, which is terrible. You know, all the wrong, but it was just a funny commentary. Sure. Hopper's the one who's Tanner, you know what I mean? The Tanner Boyle type of character. And, uh, oh, my gosh. I don't think I'm a good dad. I don't, I don't know how to uh, – I think I'm too much of a buddy, do you, you know? Do you swear in front of your kids? Hang on, yeah. Yesterday you said you were gonna help me with my new editing apps because mom said you might know. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Let's make some movies. Can we do it right after this? Can you say hi to my friend Mike? Hi. Hey, how's it going? What's up, Tanner? I just got done with my first day of school. Oh, how was that? I mean, it was fun. Well, I like fun. Kind of hard. <laughs> I'll help you with the thing later. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. That's crazy. Tanner? She was the cutest baby on the planet. Yeah. She was the most adorable thing ever. And she's still cute. I, no, I mean, I was just, but when you <laughs> pointed and you said, hey, Tanner, I was like, oh, yeah, see, that's how I feel about you. I, yeah. yeah I, it, so this is like from a dad perspective, like it just hit me right there. Yeah. It that's just crazy. Happened crazy like fast and it's funny you know what's interesting because that reminds me so she was talking about me helping her with a video editing thing Mm -hmm. and i remember 
because I was thinking about this today. I made a couple of little notes to like bring up when he was around. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them, it just said, Miles, camera, Blackberry, which I think means, so I loaned Miles this little camera that I had. I don't know if you remember that or not, but you were wanting to make videos. And I had one of those little, it was an HD thing and you just had just one button. Remember that thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. So I loaned that to you. And then he was like, yeah, I don't really need it. I just use my phone. And I was like, your phone? He had a phone that made, like an iPhone probably, that made good videos. But he, you're the reason why I ended up getting an iPhone. Because I'm, like, I'm like, oh, shit. These Blackberries are a little outdated. They, yeah. They, the the <laughs> iPhone you can make movies with, man. I, I recall that because my, my dad had given me and my sister like his old phones, just regular flip phones because he didn't want us to grow up being all spoiled and thinking we were entitled or whatever. You know, he's super cautious about that. <laughs> And uh, Zach Blair comes in from Rise Against uh, like three months early from Christmas, and he gives us brand new iPhones. Beautiful. And my dad was just kind of watching him do it. He was like, okay. All right. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I, – that's amazing. I have to ask, like, what was it like growing up uh, a descendant of a descendant, if that makes any sense? but. <laughs> awesome it is awesome Still. when did you know when did you know like okay my dad's in a badass band uh seriously like probably when i was 13 it all came together because i i had heard it, it what came together was the fact that i knew all these different voices and people in my life and then i had all these songs that i listened to with my buddies at the skate park and then i went wait that's like uncle tim on that or like that's milo like the guy with the glasses and then it came into like, oh yeah, your dad's a part of every single one of these. Like he was a massive chunk of this. And I was like, wow, guy gets around, really does some stuff. <laughs> I got, I got dad all gets the around. stats right this card. All the stats are right here. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Man, that must be a trip. But it's also normal because you're used to it. I mean, you grew up, it's dad, it's mom, it's yeah. Uncle Tim. Did you ever meet Uncle Frank? John. No, I, I don't remember how, how old you would have been. I mean, I know him. I know the name. And yeah. I know, like, all about him. That's one of my favorite things. I need to get Frank Turner on the podcast. I actually haven't had him on, but I hadn't thought well, of having Yeah. But I'm pointing at Frank Nevada. Oh, you look. see, I don't know what you're no, looking at. I know at. you think that I'm obsessed with Frank Turner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just obsessed with Franks. Any look Frank. Look at this shit. This was a very important night. I remember this night. This was a. Uh, this is before they recorded those songs that just came out. Mm, mm, but okay. uh, Frank, uh, yeah, he was not stoked, as you can see in that picture. But this, look at that. I mean, this is beautiful, you know. And yeah, I love it. And uh, I've honestly, this might. It's why I wear purple pants. Seriously, see those? Those oh, are the yeah. pants that I wear all the time. This might be like the <laughs> third time I've ever actually seen his face. I've, I've never seen pictures of him. Oh, he's the best. Or anything. I just heard all the crazy stories. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy stories. Yeah. Great. Yeah, he was great. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I wear purple pants. And that's why I always say good vibes because like he signed my Descendants record and it just said good vibes and he smiled at me. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And then he told me later, he was like, no, which I don't know, it's weird retelling something that's kind of like he was giving me a compliment but it made me feel good he's just like you're a you're a good dude john you know because like it made me happy and the good vibes and i i always talk about good vibes good vibes yeah yeah love it love that dude absolutely did i lose you no i'm here i'm just oh, okay, taking good. it all in i'm i'm uh good vibes and i'm just thinking about the memories thinking about i didn't mean to steal your story no you were i'm talking about i i don't know <laughs> what just, else yeah so, i mean if you look around yeah I mean, yeah, I got a lot of your, your I got a lot of hand-me-downs over here. <laughs> so did you, were you in the studio as a kid, just kind of just like messing with stuff, playing in the studio? For the, for the same reason that John wanted me to sing on this stuff was because he wanted a younger voice. Mm -hmm. But back then I actually had a younger voice. I didn't sound <laughs> so much exactly like my dad. Right, right. Like as far as our, my like yelling voice, for some of the songs is I, me and him are like identical. If we play it out of the left and rights, that just sounds like one dude yelling at you with me and my dad. But when I was younger, he would get me in there all the time and he'd be like, pick up three of your buddies from the skate park. And I was like, 
wow, you guys want to go sing on an album really quick? Like, who wants who wants to do this? And I would just grab my buddies and go down to the studio to yell in a mic for a little bit. Do you remember any any of the songs that you did that with your friends? Not the songs, but the bands a lot. Okay. I know, uh, I, know I, I did... So I did uh, recently, the most recent one was The Nowhere Generation for Rise Against. Oh, rad. Great, great album. Oh, hey, who's this? This is Hopper. You want me to do the thing? No, I don't. Yeah, you just did. <laughs> oh, no. I just got exposed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's big, too. Good vibes. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah, kids, they grow. I mean, like, that's the thing. It's weird, yeah. They probably don't want you to go on tour. So, so I mean, both of you should comment on this. Like, was that a thing where, you're, where your dad was leaving on tour or your kids, you're leaving on tour, John, and your kids are like, don't go? I know what I'll say about it. I'll, I'll wait for my house. He was, uh, yeah, it was, when I was really young, I didn't pay much attention to it because it was just like, I was, it was like, it was like, oh, dad's working. I'm going to go home. My mom's going to do all the like uh, parental stuff that she needs to do to like prepare me for the world type of thing. And he was just working his life away, trying to keep everything afloat, you know. Mm -hmm. But he would – and then when I would see him, it, it would be like good quality time, like actual father-son stuff. But yeah, I mean he was – throughout like him being in hospitals and him being out on tour or – when I thought he was on tour, but he was just at the studio and I never saw him. Like we would just perfectly cross each other. It was like, it was like that for most of my life. But then up until about a couple of months before COVID started, when sh everything started shutting down, me and him like had, we have a great, great, great connection now. Like he's like my best friend, but it wasn't like that for my whole life until COVID happened. So in a way I appreciate the world shutting down so that I could get a good relationship with my father because there was a lot of catching wow. up to do. But yeah, he was gone a lot of the time. That's why my dad was, I mean, that's a, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. My mom too. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. can empathize with that. Yeah. My dad was in the Navy. So my early years, yeah, I didn't really see him much. And then kind of, yeah, later oh, yeah. the world didn't shut down or anything, but yeah, I mean, I have a good, normal relationship with him he's great so john a, a true thing though i mean it, w it wasn't until really that i was in my m earlier and then in the middle 20s that i actually became good friends with uh my folks i mean i was good friends with my folks you know when i was young you know i mean there's that mm -hmm. time but then it's a different thing that's happening yeah. no matter what that's it's a good thing there's Ch a because they get to be buds now because you know the you know, plus you taught you the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Being a parent is definitely different these days than it than it was for our parents. It's a terrible one, I think. <laughs> really, too much of a friend. Uh, I, really do. I don't know. I'm trying to do. I don't know. I don't think I've screwed him up yet, but like maybe I don't know. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna. Get, I'm getting walked over. I think Hopper's gonna beat me up one day. He will. My son does that too. He'll walk up to me and just punch me. And then I'm going to be more, and then he's just going to, I know how I was. You think know? all of a sudden he's just going to be like, all right, I'm tired of this dude's shit. Yeah. All these years, here it comes. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I did, no, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It just seemed weird. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. Like they send you home with a baby and you're like, this just doesn't even seem legal. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. What? I took a couple of classes with a lady that was a doula and told us some stuff to do for an hour. And yeah, there's, you know? there's no actual what classes. There's no mandated classes. It's just, you just, here you go. Don't kill it. And you're okay. It's like, I was like, no, I don't want to leave. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but the thing about the sadness, it's true. Like, I, re I still feel it. But I remember driving away from my house once. And, uh, and uh, I was driving the van. And I drive around the corner. And I get a call. Um, you know, from someone I'm doing like this, like show stuff with, right? Like mm -hmm. so, something I needed to talk about, like advancing a show or whatever. But it was someone that was a friend of mine, and I literally got choked up, and I was like, "I gotta call you back." 
and I, I was just around the corner and I had, I could look back and barely see my family just in the front yard. And I just bawling into my hands, like sad. And then I called my buddy back and I, I told him what I'd done because he was a dad too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was intense. It's sad to leave the kids. There's something about Sucks. leaving for tour that is pretty heavy feeling. Even if you don't have a family necessarily, just leaving your home town, your parent, you know, if you're a kid, leaving your parents, going on tour. There, you don't think about it probably when you're younger, but like as I toured more and more, each time I left for tour, it was like a, a weird, melancholy ritual. It's actually fun too, but like when you're leaving your family, like when you meet up with your band and, and all that, the whole dynamic's different. Yeah. But before that, there's that right. little time. And then, and also, I'm Looking thinking of. As you're going into the airport and you see so a little cute. hand wave, yeah, a little hand that waves, and you're going, <laughs> and I'm just like, ah! <laughs> like I had a problem with my passport. Um, like long, I'll make a short story long, <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> I do do that. But I didn't need to update it, but they said I did. It cost me a, a lot, you know, to do it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of had an out to. I didn't have to go to Europe three days like i was going early so mm -hmm. i'm like yeah fuck it uh i called who i needed to call and i knew i could get a passport in like 24 hours and i had like one more day with my family because i knew that they were just going to be in denver so i like texted my wife i'm just like come on back come on back i ain't going and i knew i'm like i know i can get in because then when i walked in and you know it's just about how you carry yourself and how things are and like how much they look at you he's all frozen frozen is he frozen? Oh, he is frozen. I'm still here. Is he frozen? That's just your okay. connection. It's yeah, it should like be you good. Look like you're really taking it in. Yeah, I am. I'm having the best time. <laughs> uh, but uh, I walk through, and it's just like whoever is your your guy checking you through. You know, yeah. Like, and it's if you're nice or not, and they just wave me right in. Like I didn't even have to show them my passport. Of course. Like, wow. But you were kind of glad that you still had that extra day I, I was it was fun it was expensive but whatever <laughs> you know, it doesn't go. matter i don't care about yeah. money anymore mike did you know that i don't care i don't think you ever cared about money i never have but even more so now it's good just dumb. good yeah it's just working it, when you don't care everything works out i think so you even know? when you do care i mean when you're worried about it, it always works, usually works out anyway, right? So, like, yeah, why were you worried, so, right? Worry about it. Worry. Yeah, you don't worry about things that you don't need to worry about. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, and hang on. This is my words of wisdom. I found them. Okay, good. Just the thing I was supposed to say, it was like, when I talk about it, I'm, I'm just reading my own quote here, but I go, oh, and we made baseball before you, talk. Before you read the quote, can you, put your, can you be on camera? Because you're kind of, like, very cut off. I'm just, this is just a thing that I've said a lot about baseball. And it just says, uh, because people, sometimes they're like, oh, you're a sports fan. You love baseball. I do not love sports <laughs> at all. Baseball is humility. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So basically I'm just saying, oh yeah, baseball is all about humility. You're mostly going to lose half the time, but think of it as winning half the time. And keep your cool during both times of the extremes. Right? Yeah. If you win or losing, just keep your cool. Uh, the highs and the lows. Oh, yeah, good vibes. I said something else, though. Well, yeah, do what you like to do with people you like because it's a short life and be nice. Uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of shit I said, but thanks for doing this thing with me. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. that's, uh, I, I was just talking about the songs and just the, the time off. There was like 52 that I made, and like, I just, I just tried to connect because I am playing solo shows now. But I just like playing with friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. I mean, next time I'm up there or down in Texas, I mean, I could bug you, you know? I'm kind of, It's like a Chuck Berry thing I'm doing. Yeah. Right? I like it. You know what I mean? And I just get to maybe ask some buds to play, you know? And if they can do it, cool. And if they can't, I won't do it. <laughs> you know right, I mean? right. Don't worry about it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen sometime. Like, I, if this tour doesn't happen in September, well, whatever. Do it again. The guy that opened up the art school, what's his name? The art school? The the, the thing to teach kids out of... Oh, that's Corey Toomey. Corey Toomey. Yeah. So that 
like a couple of those songs were for him. Not all of them, right? One was for Vannon, and then one was for Corey Tooney. One of the and um, Vannon, yeah, and Vannon. I looked up the translation. Vannon means the friend. Oh, wow. Yeah, it goes deep. It goes really it. deep. Yeah, it goes. Uh... <laughs> it goes real deep. Well, we'll what what's uh, our song "Slugs" going to be on on one of your one mm. of your releases or something? Yes, possibly? or something. I yeah. don't know. It sounds do do? sounds like a John Snodgrass song. It sounds great. Um, well, I know, but so I want you to help me finish it. I will. Yeah, we'll it's, it. it's pretty good the way it is. I'll send it to you. Um, but like it does the uh, kind of does a key change, you know, and when it goes to that F and that E, there's like sort of two ways that I go about it. Um, I don't know. You tell me what you think. You All write right. great songs. All yeah. right. Thanks. I yeah. think it good. Like that's the thing. Like you just, just, it's just supposed to be fun, you know, and uh, not get too precious about things. I right? think so. That's a and if it's good, then you put it up. wise words. Yeah. Well, thank you. Right? Where where can uh... plenty of songs out there? We don't need no more songs. <laughs> you know, it's got to be good, or it's got to be there's got to be a purpose to it. Yeah. You know? I love it. Well, yeah. people have been asking for the slug song for well, have at they? least a, at least since you did my podcast last time, which is like a year ago. They yeah, every now I, and again they uh, people will bring it up, and I'm like, yeah, it's it'll happen. And now this is bringing it back up again, so they're gonna they're gonna yeah, be emboldened. I, mean, I found here's a funny thing, and I almost kind of called them on it. So I'm talking. So this tour that I'm doing, not to pretend like I'm trying to just promote it, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> Chuck Go ahead. from the Caddies, his new band. Yeah, Chuck playing. Robertson. Yeah, and I went up and I sang a song with him uh, the last time I was out there. And then last night I was talking to him and he's like, yeah, I just keep coming up with these songs and I just don't know where they come from. I mean, they, they just come from everywhere, right? Right. And, and so then I, I look into our phone, into my phone, and I'm like, dude, I'm not really sure who ripped who off, but I think he heard slugs i think he heard he heard our slugs the podcast version probably i think i'm i mean because you sang it yeah you sang it on the podcast and he well he's been on my podcast so i bet he like reviewed a few to like check it out see yeah i bet (laughs) is that motherfucker it's an ear slug it's an earworm it just got in there i gotta look this up real quick so this was uh hang on oh not apple music come on oh fuck me i'm sorry i'm cussing if all the kids are in the room, I'm sorry. You're not supposed to cuss. And you're not supposed to drink. <laughs> it's true, though. Thinking, trust me on that, Miles. I'm telling you, it's not that rad. It's really not. Uh, here we go. Slugs, September 12th, 2020. Oh, he wrote a song called Slugs? No, what we did. No, okay, we did. But what's his song, though? Yeah. His song. Hang on. We could eat slugs. Yeah, that's your song. I was talking about Chuck. Chuck's. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure I didn't change the melody. You know. Still. No, yeah, it's there. It's solid. People eat slugs. Yeah, no, so his song. Yeah, here, let me play you his song. Yeah. His song is, uh, hang on. Sorry, everybody. No, it's good. This is important when we get to this. This is a very important. Um, <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe it's not. It's not that important. Let's see here. Where is he at? What's what's his name? Chuck Robertson and friends. Okay. Just making I'm just sure. trying to cover here we it, oh, Well yeah. sometimes like uh, you man, I forget what my... now be gone. Yeah, that's not the same. Is it you singing them? It's a good song though. It's like you don't even care. It's different enough. The patterns on the wall. Damn. Maybe I don't have the balls. That tell you how I feel. I don't think this is the slugs part. Hang Maybe on, it's coming. This time is for real. Here it comes. I think I need a couple drinks. Don't drink, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make them want to drink, John. <laughs> Come on. This isn't. He didn't steal my song. No, it's, <laughs> it's all right. He didn't steal it. <laughs> Oh, that was just my way to promote my buddy's new song. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's really good. I love that dude. He's, like, he writes great songs. He, he was really like, does. come up and sing with me. Uh, just change your flight. 
and come up for a day. I go, all right, man. All you got to do is just just pick me up at the Santa Barbara train, you know? The S-Bar and, train? Yeah, yeah, at the S-Bar train. And he's like, cool, man. <laughs> so I get up there, and then he's like, yeah, there's like a bus that comes up. I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> Oh no! Alone and I'll be gone. You got got. You got got. I did get got. No, I love him. I can't wait to do those shows. Like I've been saving this forever. Um, oh, you'll just see it later. And bef- Look at before Instagram. before we yeah. go, let everybody where know where they can find your tour dates, your your Instagram, and if you want to promote anything like your socials or whatever, Miles, please. Okay. That's busted Betty. That is, well. Well, I mean, are you trying to promote it? I mean, I, you may not have anything to promote, but. Uh, I have two bands that are as as irrelevant as they could be to the world at the moment. No. But. What are you doing in your bands? We didn't talk about that. Let's talk about, we can't. Let's get talking about that. We got to talk about that before we end. You don't need to talk to me anymore. I play guitar in my bands and I try and write songs in my bands and well i learned i i wanted to learn guitar i just texted my dad all of a sudden when he was in europe just in the middle of the night it was like 11 o'clock i just went dad how do i turn on an amp and he sent me this big old educated bill stevenson reply on how to turn on an amp and so i turned on the amp and i i messed around with i think it was a jim root that i was playing on Mm -hmm. but the orange no it was black i don't know what it was but it had like active pickups. It sounded super heavy and it was gnarly. And I was playing out of this black star cab and I was like, this is sweet. Like I sound like I shred because I was just doing as fast of an open E as I could. Mm-hmm. And it sounded like I was <laughs> shredding in my first night. <laughs> yeah. Tone can do that a little bit. It's so great. then he came back and he was like, all right, do you really want to learn how to play guitar? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, all right, you're going to start practicing Descendants songs with me. And so I learned 23 Descendants songs over like the course of quarantine and then that really that's what really excelled me like progressing on guitar because i was able to play them to the best of my ability it wasn't great but i was hanging in there Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then as a musician being able to keep time with a real person like him i was it like it helped me tons and tons so then now the most recent is he's like okay so we did it on guitar so now let's try and do it on the drums i was like no i'm not gonna be able to do this one like I think it's a little bit more of a different story here, because his style of drumming is like, he always his buddies always tell him uh, there's no note unexplained mm. with his drumming. Like everything is accented already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So trying to learn to drum like that is crazy hard. That must but be. That's what I'm trying to do now. But you're so. But you are playing the drums. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Not great, but I'm I'm really trying to learn to play like he does because that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's pur- You're right. There's purpose to every note. I remember him talking about uh, how much he didn't like uh, the tambourine because he was like, "Yeah, I mean, I put all this work into, you know, composing this stuff, and uh, then the tambo goes on top. Just hey, here we are. Yeah, and then someone comes in now and shit." You know? Yeah. I just yeah. got a text Chad Price. Did you see that? I love Chad. I do too. I love Chad too. Hey Chad, what's up, Chad? <laughs> I love Chad. Uh it's a gentle soul. Wait. Yeah, wait, you were talking I wasn't involved in the conversation. That, that was all I had to say. So you're not you're not ready to you don't want to say what the band names are or anything. Oh, you don't have to, but sure. what's that? Uh, I can, yeah. Uh so first band is audiographic on Instagram. It's I think the name is Audiographic Band or something. There's We have a couple of shows coming up, so there's not much posts now, but I'll post the videos of our 10 crowd shows, which I'm really excited for. Awesome. Nothing wrong with 10 crowd shows. Exactly. Crowds. It's going to be yeah. the best thing ever. And then the second band is Hospital Socks, which I think is an amazing name. They have the nubby things on the bottom. <laughs> exactly. Hospital Socks. I Hospital like those. Socks. Those are badass socks. They got the nubby things on the bottom. <laughs> They got the nubby things on the bottom. All right. Feels like a massage while you walk. Sorry. That's great. I'm just trying to get in the band. This is great how quickly he just makes jingles. I know. It's, and I love that he calls them jingles. Anyone it makes can, it so wholesome. Anyone can do it. It's just, uh, I just, I'm just, I am, uh, what I am is I am, uh, what do they call it? Insufferable. 
Insufferable. And an insufferable jingle machine. <laughs> Solid gold, man. Solid gold. Filling up my life with music. Solid gold. Do you remember that? With Dion Warwick? I've heard it. Lionel Richie did it for no, not Lionel Richie. Uh somebody else. It's all right. You guys have been amazing. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for <laughs> working with my schedule this week, by the way. It's like constantly oh, changing. Yeah. You got a big day tomorrow. Big day. Big day. But we won't talk about it. <laughs> because You're I don't want to. You're still a good looking man, buddy. Oh, thank you. you I appreciate great. it. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. Man. Uh, well, thanks for doing this uh, and talking to us because I, I was just, I was excited. I, I kind of, yeah. I wanted to have Miles hang out and I wanted to talk about this thing that we were going to put out and uh yeah it's out and now it's sold out, out. <laughs> i know man there's going to be like a it's a, basically a week ago it sold out so congratulations right. go see john snodgrass play shows in california some east coast even probably yeah. and i'll have three to five depends on like i said how many he takes from me beautiful at, at each show like i'm going to spread them out and take them all the way to the fest and i'll have some for halloween and florida you know, that's right fest awesome yeah. awesome yeah. Miles, dude, great to talk and meet I you. And to say, oh, did you freeze? I froze, but I can hear you. It's a face freeze. It's a face freeze. I don't know if it's audio freeze. Oh, yeah. oh, oh you're freeze? back. Here you go. Back. Here you go. Uh, I wanted to say, I briefly, uh, the last two nights, when he sent me a link on your podcast just so I could brush up and learn about everything, um, I saw that you did Jason from Audio Karate. Mm -hmm. And I'm wearing an Audio Karate t-shirt. That is my all-time favorite band. I'm flying out to San Diego on Wednesday just to see them. Wow. They're, really? Oh, wow. yeah. They're, Where's that? Uh, I don't know what the soda bar. venue. I think so. Sounded like you were about to say Soda Bar. I think it might be Soda Bar. I love but, San Diego. That's <laughs> rad. <laughs> yeah. Be, audio like, Karate is awesome. Uh, PSOL and Descendants. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm there. They're as not much as the I respect bar. the other two, I'm <laughs> yeah. there with Audio Karate. <laughs> Not That's the not soda shop. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is. I don't think it's a very Soma. Good venue. They're going to be at Soma. Soma probably, yeah. Yeah, Dude, that makes sense. I played at Soma once, and I played with uh, Lagwagon, right? Yeah. Armchair Martian did. Oh, sure. And then we were going to play um, with 3 Mile Pilot at the Casbah, right? Which was... Small venue. You know, yeah, we've been there. 21 show and then like an all-ages type of show. Tumble down playing with you guys. And the Soma was so pissed. I thought that I'd okayed it with him. Mm -hmm. He was not stoked. And uh, <laughs> and Benny, our like merch guy, like he was at the end of the night just still selling merch while we, while we went to the show. And then he sees Benny and he's like, they're playing at the Casbah tonight? And he like pushes him out the door and it was raining. And then, and then Benny gets in a cab to go to the Casbah, right? And they got, and the guy took him to the old Casbah, and he was just out there. <laughs> and then he shows up with just this cardboard box that was just a mess. I don't know. It's just kind of a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's why he was mad. Yeah, and I'm like, both shows were like sold out. It had nothing to do with it. Yeah, like that's, that's why you gotta just put yourself in other people's shoes. People are having their own problems, right? Mm -hmm. This guy was. He wasn't super cool. Wasn't being cool. Not cool. Because we at all. talked about it. Not you know good what vibes. I mean? Not good we vibes. We talked about it. But he <laughs> chose someone to get mad at and he got mad at Benny. And, yeah. Anyways. We had a but, great uh, time what? when Tumbledown yeah. opened for you guys, uh, opened for Drag the River on that West Coast tour. And we ended, I think we ended in San Diego. So and we Those part, were great. partied all night with you guys. I think we played the Casbah. We should do rock and roll again. We will. Yeah. Slug, slug and roll. Or is it rock and slide? People eat slugs. <laughs> People eat slugs. Do you see what I did there, though? So it starts. It's in A, right? Yeah. But I'm starting on the on the F sharp minor, right? That's very. But clever. then when I return, then I do it like it's in D, and it gives the whole thing a lift. I like it. It's a little songwriting thing for people here. It confused you know, me. Just to add a little support. without. It was it was good when I listened to it. I was like, how, how does this even go? So. Oh, did you listen to it? Well, from the podcast. Remember the podcast when we did it? Oh, yeah. I like right. picked up my guitar the after and I was like, wait, I can't figure this out. <laughs> All right. Later. <laughs> love you, buddy. Thanks All right. I love you. love you too. Hey, Miles, great to see you. Great to nice have you on. Meeting you. You too. All right. Cheers. <laughs>